Welcome back, everybody. In this episode, we're up in sunny Brisbane, and we just helped our brother-in-law, Greg, install this fantastic roller cover onto his Trident Ute. So we thought we'd do a DIY installation video to help you out if you're looking to do the same. There's a few little things we came across, so be sure to watch this video all the way through, and we'll show you how. So this particular cover is an Oz Canopies 4x4 roller top. We believe it's very similar to the mountain tops that you can also get. If you've got a different brand of roller cover or ute, the installation will be very similar, so you can probably follow through and guide yourself through your own installation. Now, while you could probably do this with one person, I highly recommend doing it with two. It made it a lot easier as you assemble the side rails onto the canister first, then lift it up onto the ute. It also made it a lot easier to align things and get everything sitting into place. So it's all nice, true and plumb to make this roller operational nice and smooth. While we're doing this installation on our MQ Triton Ute, it'd be very similar for any model Triton in the MN all the way through to MR range. There'll just be a few little differences such as how the drainage tubes work in the rear, a few little clips and stuff like that. In our case, we've refitted the sports bar onto the front of the tray and we've gone through the process of putting the adapters and mounting them onto the side rails of this roller top. Now why would you put a roller cover on your ute? If you've got a traditional tonneau cover you've got no security at all. The next level up from that might be a hard cover or one of these roller covers where you can actually lock the roller cover in place and it's a nice secure area under the tray to store all your valuables including tools. We're also going to do a part two to this where we install a central locking kit into the tailgate so that you have a mixed mode operation. You can leave this locked and anytime you unlock the vehicle, you can open and close the tailgate. Then if you need to access items from inside the tray, you can unlock this with a key and open it up as you normally would. Be sure to watch that video and add that to your kit if you're putting a roller shutter on your particular ute. Anyhow, let's get into the installation. First step is to remove the tonneau cover and the sports bar if you have them on as well. And in the case of a Triton, there's four 13mm bolts on either side and it should just lift off. You also want to make sure you remove any supporting brackets underneath. So in the case of the Triton, we also remove these 13mm bolts and the brackets underneath. So this roller cover comes with its own instructions which we'll use as a basis for the video. It also comes with all the hardware, including some 3M primer, which is great for actually touching up any holes you need to drill. You then have drain tubes for the front, another pair of drain tubes for the rear, associated brackets, foam backing tape, and other brackets required for the full installation. Now the first step is to bring the major components in, and that's the roller cover itself, and then the two side tracks which go onto the top of your tray. You wanna locate it so that the cover rolls out from the top, and the drain tubes are at the bottom. And then it's just a case of sliding each of these side rails into the guides in the top of the cover and then doing a quick test fit onto the tray. Now with your side rails, this is the end that goes onto the roller canister itself. You need to slide the front edge of the roller up into these guides to start off with. There's then these two mounting holes on both sides of the canister that you need to place this back down that you then screw back from underneath. Make sure you put some Loctite on the bolts that go into these two fixtures, and this will affix the two side rails onto your roller canister itself. So it's a case of pulling this roller cover out a little bit and sliding it into the guide. Like so. And then we want to position this side rail so we can bolt it up from underneath.
Now it's simply a case of repeating the same process on the other side. Now if you've got a previously installed tonneau cover that most youths would probably have, we've got to come through and drill out all the rivets that hold these mounting brackets on. Then we'll pull the channels off and then we're ready to start doing a trial mount of the roller cover itself. So the job is made a lot harder if you've got an existing tonneau cover on your ute itself. You need to drill out all the rivets, clean it all up and get the rails off. You'll be left with some double sided tape on the top of the tub and around where all those rails went. You can use a caramel wheel to remove that or some other adhesive remover. At the end of the day the gaskets for the roller cover rails actually fit over the top so it's up to you how far you want to take that as far as detailing it back to the original Juco. The other thing we've been discussing before we do the final install is that the canister and the rails both need to drain down through the tray. Now our complication is that we've got a tray liner as well. So we pulled the tray liner out just to have a look and work out how we can get it to drain. In a Triton there are two grommets on either side of the back wall of the tray. Now these you can use to drain back out and that's what the instructions roughly suggest. These grommets down on the bottom actually are for the mounting bolts that secure the tray onto the chassis so you can't drain down through those. The other option is that you drill new holes through the bottom of the tray and use finer grommets but no matter which way you go about draining it there's always going to be the complication particularly if you've got a tray liner of lining it all up and working out how you feed the drain tubes through and also weather seal them either to the tray or to the liner. Now our approach is going to be to drill a hole in the factory grommets because they're quite large and the kit doesn't provide anything of this size to actually retrofit back into the hole. Being the Christmas holidays we've kind of got to use what we've got here so we're going to put the hole through this grommet, silicon the drain tube to the grommet and then feed the tubes through that way which we'll show you shortly. One other thing if you've got a tub liner is that you need to cut the back wall down. So you can see here we've actually taped up a line. You want to go just above the holes that are already in the liner for the rear tethers and then run along horizontally and then up the sides on and you'll see an internal crease in the mould of the tub liner and that will make the clearance you need. <laughs> So you've got a few different options you can use. You can use an angle grinder or we found a multi-tool worked really well to get a nice neat cut there. Just come along give it a light sand and it's ready to go. And now that we've got the liner back in you can see these tubes just sticking up through the back of the liner where we cut the height down and they'll be able to tuck under the canister and plug into the drain tubes on that. Next we're going to pull the tail lights out because doing a bit of research that's the best location to put the drain tubes that go onto the side rails and they drain out through the rear. So we use a 10mm socket to remove the top and bottom bolts and the tail light should come out. Then you just unplug the tail light and do the same on the other side. Now on the MQs there's a hole just down the bottom where the wiring loom runs through that drains down to the ground. On the MR it's down through the back side of the tail light and that goes down under the bottom of the tub as well. Just make sure the hole you're putting the tube through drains to the ground. So with the step bit on your drill you want to drill in just far enough that the hole is tight enough for the tube to run through. I think it'll be around about 18mm and we're going to put the hole just up in this corner of the tub which will go through the liner on the other side and then we can pass the tube down through here and drain out through the bottom of the tray. Then you just want to test fit the pipe to make sure you're not making it oversized. We've still got a bit more to go. And then the kit comes with this 3M primer. You want to paint this around any holes you make in your bodywork to make sure it doesn't corrode and rust. 
Alternatively, you can always spray it with some spray paint or some etch primer to seal the hole you've made in your bodywork. The next part is to put the rubber gasket along the top edge of the back of the tray. Before you do this, it's important to make sure you've got a nice clean surface. So we're just going over the top with some metho. If you've got some isopropyl or cleaning alcohol, you can also use that as well. You just wanna make sure it's all nice and dry and clean. Put the rubber gasket in, and then we fix in the top support. Now it's just a case of putting the square tube on top of the gasket with the holes facing up because you then need to fix it onto the top of the tray. Now it's a case of going and putting the mounting brackets for the rails onto each side of the tray. So you've got three brackets on each side and tech screws which go into the side of the tray here. So starting at the square tube we just put in, you measure across 460 mil and then I've just used a sharpie to mark the top edge at the 460 mark then we do another mark at 420 and then a third mark at 420 again and these are the center lines for your brackets they get fixed in so the top of the bracket is flush with the top of the tub Now we're just going to skip ahead a little bit because it makes sense for us to put the L brackets on to these brackets we just fixed on to the side just loosely for now so that once the roller cover goes on the brackets are in place and we can fix it all up and align the tracks to the side of the tub. So these are the brackets that get fixed on to these plates like so and they get bolted in via a stud in through from the track and then bolts in through the slots on the sides. But the important thing is that you've got the horizontal slot that goes onto the side of the tray and then the vertical slot here goes up to allow the tracks to be adjusted from side to side. Next you want to put the cover plate onto the canister and fix it via the three mounting screws on either side. Then you have six of these square nuts, three on either side go into the bottom track of your side rails. What we're going to do is fit the stud onto these first and then slide them in and that'll make them easier to move around once it's back into the tray. Like so, so that the grub screw is facing up and so the stud comes out of the rebated bit of the square nut so it can slide through the track. And now we're ready to lift the roll top up onto the tray of the ute, do a test fit, make sure everything's all good to go and then fix it down onto the tray. Uh, next we want to put our drain tubes onto our rails. Now one thing we've noticed in regards to this Triton, MRs might be slightly different because the holes down in this cavity are in a slightly different location. However, once we get this tube on, the tube going down into the cavity here to drain out through the bottom is a little bit too short. So if you've got an NQ or earlier, you might find that you need to extend this drain tube a little bit. And that's a simple case of sourcing a ribbed hose connector getting some additional hose and tucking it back out through the bottom. Moving up to the front end of the tray underneath the canister, the other slight complication is just trying to connect these lines up to the unit. It'd be a lot better if there was a drain coming from the underside of the canister, but the drains in this one come out through the side. So what we've done with the Mitsubishi tray liner is we've fed the drain out through the hole where the rear tether point is through the tether point and it loops around and is a really nice fit into the drain on the side of the canister. It's really hard installing this with a tub liner, but we've made it work. So now we get on to aligning each side and tightening up the install. 
Now it's just a case of locating these studs, which are in the square nuts, which slide along the track underneath, into the brackets, and getting them roughly square and lined up. And then we loosely put on our nuts and washers. But don't tighten up at this stage because you want to get all the brackets on, in place, and then we align the rails from side to side and front to back. So the next part we want to do is we've treated the back edge of the tailgate and we're going to put the other rubber gasket down onto the edge of the tailgate. Now it's just a case of putting the tailgate up and then we've got to pull the cover back across and make sure that it's going to seal on the back of the tailgate here. So that feels like it's got a really good seal actually. So now it's a case of just releasing this back off, sliding it back, and then we put the bar in and adjust it from side to side and get it all nice and square so we can tighten up all the brackets. So what you do is you get this bar that sits in the sliding tracks of the roller. From there, we're going to tighten up the back a little bit just to make sure it doesn't move around. And then we'll move our way up to the front to make sure everything's all nice and parallel and then we'll check the diagonals to make sure it's all nice and square. Once you're happy that the top's all nicely adjusted and that it shuts properly, it's just a case of going through, cleaning the sides off and then peeling off the backing so that you can fix down the gaskets onto the sides of the tray. Now we're just gonna put the tail lights in and we'll get onto the sports bar brackets. Now to fit the sports bar onto your ute fitted with a roller cover, you need to buy an adapter kit. Now the adapter kit essentially replaces the brackets that sit on all four corners of the sports bar and provides plates that then bolt down onto the tracks of the roller shutter itself. So what we'll do now is we'll remove these four brackets, put in the new square nuts similar to what we did to the underside for the mounting points for the side tracks. And then it's just a case of putting this on, securing it down and it's all done. So as you can see, there's two 13s on each of these brackets. You remove these and then it looks like just one 13 goes into the brackets with a kit for this particular hardtop. So you have four of these square nuts on either side, just the same as what we did to the underside here. And while it looks like they should slide in through the opening in the top of the track, they don't seem to go. So we found that you can actually just push them in from the end and feed them in and then slide them back down the track. So it's just a case of putting four of these in to either side, sliding them through, and then you have two different brackets to each side. You have this one here with the triangle, and then you have this one here with the square stamped into it. So all you do is sit these into the bottom of the sports bar and then put in the locating bolts, tighten this up, bring the sports bar over, put this down, position your square nuts, and then we're ready to fasten it down. So this plate here with the triangle, it mounts on the front here with the triangle, which is stamped into the plate, facing the front of the vehicle, which kind of makes sense really. And then you have this longer plate here, which seems quite odd, but because most of the sports bars have an angle bar coming down to land onto this, that actually makes sense once you bolt it down. So then the one with the square in it will actually mount towards the rear and fingers crossed, this all works out. A few moments later. Now we've been having all sorts of dramas with these plates and trying to line them with the tracks on either side. So I've done a bit of research and it turns out that there's these grommets that sit on the main hoop that goes around and there's a bolt that goes into the angular bar that comes out to the rear. What you can do is actually loosen this bolt and then you can readjust the back leg and get it sitting right and then you can play around with these plates to get them the right plate on the right foot so that it actually works in your particular setup and that worked really well so there's a 17 mil bolt that's in the end of the bar here you just loosen that off place it up onto the side rails and then you can manipulate this foot from side to side and twist it around a little bit so that you can get the base plates sitting in the right location. So to finish the installation of the sports bar, 
You want to position your square nuts roughly in the right spot so that you can anchor the sports bar down in the position that you need. We're actually going to put one of the nuts right forward so the sports bar sits roughly in the same position as what it did from factory. If you don't, when you put this grommet in, you need to position it right back and there's a fairly big gap between the cab and the sports bar, which it leads us on to the step you do before you bolt all this down. There's this rubber grommet here, which then goes down and plugs the hole so that no water gets into the lower channel of the side rails and makes it all watertight. So we'll put this in now, position all our square nuts, put the sports bar into position and bolt it all down. Turn up the nut on the sports bar. Ooh. Then we just pop the grommet back in. And that's the install pretty much done. There's a few little adjustments you can make, such as adjusting the spring on the canister so that the spring loading on the cover is looser or tighter depending on how you like to operate it. You don't want to have too much force to pull it forward, but you don't want it too loose either so that it's just flopping around as you're trying to use it. You want a little bit of force to allow it to retract back properly into the canister itself. So we've discovered a few things along the way, which should hopefully help you out if you're looking to do this install. But that said, this ute now has a versatile and lockable cover that can retract if you've got large loads you need to put in, as opposed to a hard lid that actually flips up. If you have something really tall, you almost have to unclip and pull the hard lid off, which is really quite difficult if you're out somewhere you buy something and you need to get it home. Now part two of this installation is we're going to install a central locking kit onto this tailgate so that it will unlock and lock with the vehicle. So that you can leave this locked, you can still access all your bits and pieces without having to put a key in to unlock the roller cover to get access to the tray at all times. So this will be filmed right now and we'll release it very shortly. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you out. If you've got any suggestions, please put them below in the comments section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Share around if you know anyone that's looking to do something similar. It doesn't need to be a Triton. Most of these kits are fairly generic and the installation is very much the same depending on what vehicle you've got. If you've got a tray liner, obviously there's a little bit of extra work that you need to do and really pay attention to those drainage tubes because it's essentially like putting a sunroof onto the back of your ute. If those drainage tubes kink or block in any form, it'll just overflow back into the tub, which isn't what you want to happen. Anyway, we've got to get on to the second part now. Thanks for watching, and as we always say, get out there, stay safe, and have fun. Catch you next time.